I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. We've been having a series of um, discussions on social media about false prophets, fake miracles, all kinds of scandals all over Africa in the body of Christ. Why have these things become very, very common? Number one, this is the era where the world is a global street. So when one thing happens in one place, it goes viral all over. Number two, the church is in a hurry and it did not start today. I heard in those days, one prominent owner of a Bible school said that the Lord will come in his lifetime. He was the owner of Trinity College of Ministerial Arts, late Senator Mark Wolu, a very good Christian. He said that the Lord will come in his lifetime. I think he has passed on for many years now, the Lord had not come. When we got born again in the 80s, it was as if Christ was coming the next few years. And so everything was done in a hurry. We were evangelizing like no man's business. We were opening churches too rapidly. And because we were opening these branches and churches too rapidly, it's like the expansion of an empire. When an empire expands too fast, after some time, there's lack of control from the center. And so, we, as we open these branches, people were prematurely made pastors. And you see, the Bible says, do not lay hands suddenly on any man. And so people were ordained into ministry without proper training and mentoring. The resultant effect was mass production of pastors. And you see, goods that are mass production goods, most times don't endure. They don't have good quality. Crafted goods, handcrafted goods are more expensive. And so we just raise all kinds of pastors. And you see, anointing is a very dangerous thing. It can either make you or mar you. When the spirit of the prophet is not under the control of the prophet, so many things can go wrong. And ministry became very glamorous and flamboyant. And so every person was thinking, every young man, it coincided with when the economy was down. Every young man was thinking that ministry was the next place to get into, to make a living and to make wealth. And because of the flamboyance, people wanted to key into the flamboyance and they started overstretching themselves to do things in order to bring wealth. And then I remember in those days when, you, when pastors meet, I don't know if they still do that, what's the size of your congregation? How many services do you hold? How many branches do you have? When you go for conferences and conventions, they will say, if your branch is not growing, close it and become a deacon in another man's ministry. So there was the pressure to grow churches and all kinds of gimmicks were involved and all kinds of activities just to attract the audience. And then I said the economy was down, so poverty, poor government and ignorance. Poverty, poor government and ignorance in Africa generally made the people desperate. Poor health facilities, insecurity, um, low life expectancy, superstition, they coexisted. And so ministries were built on fear. I'm always amazed. People will tell me, Happy New Week. Happy New Month. Has life become so uncertain that each month, I have a church near me here, every last day of the month, they will come and pray here till morning. 
Even if it falls on Monday, they will leave their businesses and come and pray. So the people, because of insecurity, no guarantee. Insecurity now is different from lack of safety. Insecurity now is the lack of the guarantee of the future. So when you see our prayer points in church, whoever is worrying you, whoever is doing this, wherever they mention your name, people are not being taught responsibility in the church. It's just fear, fear being created. And then because of the lack of a great future, you just be prophesying into their lives. And because of poor health services, there are disease conditions that are prevalent out of ignorance, malnutrition, bad environment, and stress, and anxiety neurosis. So you see prayer, 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 healing, deliverance, and all that. Where there is good governance, good health facilities, you hardly see people as desperate for prayer as we are in Nigeria. Then in a bid to compete, we started having big projects. The biggest church, I have the biggest church. And in a bid to build these projects, people wanted, needed money to build these big projects, these big auditoriums. And the resultant effect is that anyway, anyhow, any time they could raise money to build these giant auditoriums, they, 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 they maximized them and manipulated people to get those monies. One other thing, I talked about flamboyance initially. America, when Christianity got to Rome, it became an institution. It became governance. It got to the UK, it became a tradition. Then it got to America, it became entertainment and commerce. And so they now brought that entertainment and commerce to Nigeria, and we turned it to a business. And to Africa, we turned it to a business and to exploitation. So you see people, the, the craze for private jets, the craze for limousine, the craze for ushers, the craze to be treated like uh, celebrities became the norms of the day and every young man wanted to fall into that category and that class where do we go from here we need to go back to the basics again when somebody got born again there was new converts class they were taught in the new converts class before they go to sunday school there's a Sunday school class meant for them. And then from there, gradually they are baptized before they are given duties. In the Anglican church, they have a process, ends up with confirmation. So we should not be desperate to do mass production Christianity and uh, do this flamboyance and live like the world. If we can calm down a little bit and be more detailed Say you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works prepared for you in advance. You are a masterpiece. You are not a mass production Christian. Let's produce masterpieces. The day I got born again, my wife got born again at the Living Word Training Center, Reverend Imao Kori, Reverend Marshall John Oposio preached the day I got born again. We that got born again that time, we have stood as icons of excellence in every sphere of our lives. Let's produce masterpieces again. And let's trust God for a new revival that will usher in the Lord Jesus. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. God bless you. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, plus 2347052136763. The word of God endure it forever. All men are like grass and their glory like the flowers of the field, of the grass on the field. And the grass withers and the flowers fall to the ground. But the word of God abided forever. The Bible says, and Moses knew the ways of God, but the people of Israel saw the deeds. Let's teach the people, let's hunger for the ways of the Lord, the ways of God and not the deeds of God alone. Both of them are good. 
but let's go for more of the ways of the Lord. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. God bless you.